Good morning. Today's devotion comes from Psalm number 20. Psalm number 20 is a prayer, a prayer that's oddly, strangely, providentially, actually perfectly lines up with what we've been experiencing here in the United States in the last two months, in the last two weeks, as we faced new and interesting challenges seemingly every day, challenges we didn't expect. And yet in the end, we need to continue in faith and trust God for good. Psalm number 20 is where we're at this morning. Let's read it. And let's just have just minimal commentary on it because it really speaks for itself. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over salvation and in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. It is a psalm of David, as we've seen so many of these early psalms in the book have been from David. It is a psalm that really is meant to describe the king leading the army out to war. The king, as he should have done in the Old Testament time period, would have gone out to war with his armies, led his troops, if you will, into battle. We know when David didn't do that, that's when he got in trouble with Bathsheba. The model of the image is he's there with his men leading them into combat. And this is a prayer for the king. Now, David, of course, is the king and he's writing about himself, but he's asking the people to sing this song with him. In other words, he's asking them to pray for him and his leadership as he leads them into desperate and trying times. But in light of what we've been through, like I said, in the last two months, the last two weeks here in America, and in some cases around the world, it's appropriate that we look at this psalm as not just the one about combat, but one about the battle, the fight against evil, the struggle that those who are upright and righteous face day in and day out from those who would long to see them defeated, who would long to see evil win. If you know your Bibles, you know in the book of Revelation, it tells us that God wins in the end. But in the midst of the battle, it's often hard to remember that when we focus on the moment. And so let's read Psalm number 20 again, bit by bit, verse by verse. Minimal commentary, of course, because it is quite obvious what David means. And really, even the reading of it in our own light, in our own times, is not that far removed from what David said 2,000 years ago, or actually 3,000 years ago. So let's go through the psalm, and let's think about what it is that David is crying out and seeing if, how this would apply in our own prayer lives as well. Psalm number 20, verse 1. May the Lord, or may God, answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God, of Jacob, protect you. And so here we are again, yet another prayer in this early part of the book of Psalms where God is called out to, where David is expecting God to hear the cry and respond. And the hope, the value, the meaning of God's response is bound up there in the second part of verse 1. May the name, may all that God is, remember names represent the person, the character, their nature. May the name of God, of Jacob, the God of the covenants, the God of the promise, may that God protect you. What's that protection look like, David? Verse 2, may he send you help from the sanctuary. May he send you help from his house and give you support from Zion. Now, Zion, of course, is the location of the temple. The imagery is not that God's going to come bursting forth, that the priests are going to come running out in battle armor. But the picture is that that place where we go to meet and encounter God, that connection point, the center, if you will, of our relationship with him, that's where our help is going to come from, from the sanctuary, from our connection with God May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. Now, David is not advocating here that God will respond based on how good you were, but he's asking here to God remember all the times that you have been faithful, all the times that you've been upright and good. It's a good reminder for us here to make sure that we've been faithful, not in terms of our sacrifices or our offerings, not that God is counting our tithes, though those are means of expressing our worship. But the question is, have we been worshipful? Have we been faithful? Have we been diligent in our prayer and our Bible reading? May he remember those things. The more you've done them, the more he has to remember, of course. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. 
Again, not a verse claiming for the ability for us to lay out before God all we want and God just automatically gives it. But the desire here is that God hears our heartfelt cries as long as they're legitimate, James says, right? We often don't get our prayers answered because we ask for things selfishly. But here, David's crying out, may God grant your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. If your plans are righteous, if they're good, God will honor those desires. May we shout for joy over your salvation. And in the name of, the, of our God, set up our banners. May we rejoice at God's goodness, the goodness through salvation. The banners, of course, here is language of war. The marching banners that went before the armies. May we shout for joy. May we celebrate the victories. May we give God all the glory for it. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now, David begins verse 6, I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Now, of course, the anointed can have two possible meanings here. The obvious meaning in the original context is the anointed is the one that has been picked by God to be king. Remember, Samuel was sent by God and he anointed David there in Jesse's house. But we also know that the anointed is the word Mashiach, the word we translate as Messiah. The anointed is also the one who's coming from God to rescue his people. In light of the New Testament fulfillment of these things, the prayer here is may God, he knows that God saves the anointed, that saves the Messiah. That when he cries out, he'll answer from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. David wants to be safe from battle, but our hope today as we read Psalm 20 is that God who raised Jesus from the dead will hear our cries, that the God who can raise him can raise us also. Here's the crux of the matter, if you will, in verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, think of the battle array, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. That's our hope, not the government, not the police, not our insurance, not our medical care, our hope is ultimately in the name of the Lord our God. Is that your hope today? Those who don't, those who don't trust in the Lord, who trust in the chariots, who trust in the horses, who trust in all these other human things. Verse 8 says, they collapse and fall, but we rise and we stand upright. We stand in the presence of God righteous. O Lord, save the king. Save the anointed one. Save the Messiah, raise him from the dead, and then may he answer us when we call. We cry out in the name of Jesus. We come to the Father through him, and when we do so, God hears our cries. May that be your prayer today. Not that God will rescue you, that God will make you healthy, that God will make you wealthy, but that you'll be upright, that you'll stand strong in whatever battle or problem that confronts you, whether it's the COVID, whether it's racism, whether it's dealing with all the problems that have come out of the last few weeks and the murder of George Floyd, whatever the problem might be, remember our first hope, our first recourse is leaning upon God, not on our own understanding, not on all these other things. In fact, one of the things we've learned over the years, isn't it, is that when we depend on other people to take care of our problems, very often what they do is introduce new problems to us. We've seen it when we've asked the government to intervene on things. You know, as a historian, one of my favorite stories is to tell students about how in the ancient Near East, when the Israelites finally returned from exile, they came back hoping to be reestablished. They didn't have a king. Remember, Zerubbabel came back with Ezra and Haggai and that generation of people, but he was a governor. He's never a king. They never had a king after the exiles. The Greeks eventually come along and defeat the Persians, and the Greeks then invade Israel. And so Israel is subjugated in their own land. Then they struggle. They're able to rise up and defeat the Greeks, to reestablish their own independence, if you will. But they had political struggles within their own ranks. They fought against each other. And so in a bold move, perhaps politically, but in a really poor move, when we think about it in the longer scheme of history, they invite the Romans to come in and help them resolve their own internal debates. And what the Romans did is they came in and took over. Thus, when David writes here, some trust in chariots and some in horses, that's our human response, to trust what we can see, to trust what we can touch. But remember, those things fail. They fall apart. They often rust. The moths eat them and take them away. But we should trust in the name of the Lord our God. He never fails. May that be true of you and whatever you're facing today. May that be true of us as a church as we face the future. And it may be true of our country as we call them to revival, as we show them the way 
as we live for Christ. For all this, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.